Welcome to Channel 17, the Town of Colony Government Channel. Hello and welcome to Getting to Know You. I'm your host, Robert Jakeway. On today's show, we're going to be talking with Ellen Liss, who is the Director of Development for the Williamstown Theatre Festival. And we're going to be doing something just a little different than we have on other shows. We're going to actually go on location and talk with Ellen at Williamstown. So let's go meet her. Ellen, I want to thank you very much for letting me be your, ge your guest today here in Williamstown at the start of our interview. and, and uh, just. Thanks so much. Oh, it's our pleasure and, and just so thrilled to be able to bring you into our Nico stage, which is my very favorite. Um, a beautiful place with great acoustics and beautiful line sights, and I'm thrilled to be able to host you here. Watch out, I'll start performing. <laughs> <laughs> great. Now, Ellen, for, for our viewers' benefit, I want to have you tell us a little about your background, how you came to Williamstown. Oh, sure. I am what is called a development officer, and I began my career career in development at RPI in Troy and that's where I learned my craft and I moved on to um, the Allegheny Health System in Philadelphia and from there I moved to a, a lovely little school for deaf children outside of Boston and after that I moved on to Williamstown um, to hone my craft bring my skills to just a different venue. Now Director of Development, is that your title? That is my title. Okay. What, is, what is a Director of Development? What do you do? As a Director of Development, my primary job is to create relationships with donors and prospective donors who are interested in the Williamstown Theatre Festival. People who want to invest in the festival, who want to invest in its future. It, it is a fundraising position, but people want to make sure that this theater is going to last forever into perpetuity, and it's my job to create those relationships. Now we're talking, about, we're talking about a lot of years now, so you're talking about a theater that's well established, has a lot of history behind it, so it's your mission to, to, to continue this and to get people to support. Uh, how do people do that? Well, people do that. We have a wonderful membership program, and you can give a gift of any size. Um, our top donors are $10,000 and above, ten, and some of them are in the six figures. These are people who really are able to donate at that level and are very interested in making sure that the show goes on. But we have all different levels. We have our archangels, we have our angels, our benefactors, our patrons. So at any level that you give, you become a member of the theater. And dependent upon the level at which you give, there are benefits that you get. You get to, you get to have a box office first come. You can call and change tickets, all sorts of different benefits. But these are the people who, year after year, come back to support the theater because it's extremely important to them. Now, this is an all-year round um, um, task for you. I mean, this is something that doesn't just happen when the theater season starts. I mean, this is a, a year-round operation, isn't it? Oh, definitely. I'm what you call a 12-month permanent employee, <laughs> and um, I am very busy talking with donors all year long. Matter of fact, as we move into our season, which we're doing right at the moment, it gets pretty hectic, and we're very busy making sure that our donors are well-served, that they have the tickets that they need, and, and the seats that they really appreciate and that's one of the nice things about becoming a member is you have those privileges we take care of that the general public is is always here in watching the play but our members get first first shot at everything now do you do, do, do people seek you out or I mean do you have to actually go and say gee I think that person would be a good patron that is, it, it works both ways. I'm always paying attention, quite honestly, in my position as to who is coming, who is buying a lot of tickets, who has a real interest. Because when you are a development officer, 
it really makes no difference how well a person can support you if they're not inclined. And I need to make sure that a person is interested in the theater. And then what I do is I call them, I talk with them, and we talk about the theater. And I listen to them. It's extremely important to listen to your donors. And we get a lot of really good, helpful ideas about what we can do better. And that's exactly what we do. Some people I seek out, some people seek me. Okay, so being responsive is absolutely key. Oh, yes, very definitely. And it's fun. You know, Robert, it is a lot of fun talking. I have talked with so many really interesting people who have great life stories that they share with you, and it just makes the job fun. Now, we, we, obviously, there's people who have been coming to this theater, uh, into this festival, for, for many, many years. Mm -hmm. I mean, is it possible that they could have, you still have people who've been here for the whole time? But anyways, a lot of time, people who come back year after year mm -hmm. and um, really are devoted to this place. Oh, definitely. We're in our 53rd season. This is our 53rd season. And I have talked with some really marvelous people who have been here since day one. And we talk about how it's evolved, some of the changes. I mean, it was a huge change coming into this building three years ago. And the excitement level, though, is always there. And that's what I love and they tell me, Ellen, I love this theater. I love the Williamstown Theater Festival. It is a huge part of my life. And it's not only a part of my life, it's a part of my children's life. There you go. It at many cages and our, our grandchildren. And so it becomes a family tradition. Uh, I, you know, we're, gonna, we're going to do uh, a little bit of, of time traveling. Um, but before we go to the studio, uh, through the magic of television. We're going to take some shots also of the building and some other shots around the area so people can get an idea of exactly what this wonderful place looks like. I mean, uh, it's, talk about a transformation. I know it's, it's, it's several years old now, but wow. Uh, oh yeah, it, it's, it's a great place and it has evolved because of this building, we have been able to expand our productions. We've gone from seven productions, actually from five productions to seven productions, and this year to ten, because we now have three stages that we can use. And we are also able to increase our audience. The original theater held 90 people, and that's all we had. This theater holds 170, our main stage 500, and the center stage, which we're using for the first time this year, dependent upon the production, can hold up to 125 people. So we have been able to bring theater to many more people, and it feels so good. And you can have things happening all at the same time, or oh, yes. sort of, right? Well, yeah, we do. And there's many evenings this summer when there will be three productions going on in three different stages with three different audiences, and uh, that's fine. It works really, really well. It, you, you step up your rehearsals, and you have a lot more people here. But it's extremely exciting. Now, where is the center stage, actually? Because I, this is the, the Nikos, which was Correct. the old main stage. Yes. And we're going to um, be able to uh, hopefully see the main stage. Yes. But where is the center stage? Is that the old Nikos? Nope. That is also a part of this building, and it's toward the back. I'll show you where that is. And that's the black box theater. Okay. That's the room that is uh, a black box, black uh, walls, floors, the whole thing. And you're, you're sitting, instead of in this theater where people are looking up on the stage, in the black box, the audience is looking down and it's a universal it's space you can do almost anything you can. can do absolutely anything very versatile okay so let's 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 do a little traveling let's do it okay 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 Ella, we've transported ourselves from the Nico stage to what is the main stage this is the big theater 500 seats you said Correct. and uh, it is really an impressive space so I wanted our audience to get a chance to to look at it Mm -hmm. You know, and get a maybe a, a little feeling of what it's like here. It really doesn't look like 500 seats in here, um, but obviously you can fit 500 people in yes, here. Yes, I can. Uh, but it's very intimate. Um, I think the way that it was configured with the balconies, which draws you down to the stage, gives it that feeling of intimacy. Mm -hmm. And um, it also is great with acoustics and all of those sorts of things. And people really are not so far back from the stage that everyone can see, and it's a, a really good experience. Really marvelous. I'm so glad we could see it. I'm glad that you could, too. I love it. I think it's absolutely beautiful. OK, let's go to another place. OK, let's. <laughs> well, Ellen, we, we just came from the, from the main stage, and now we have a real special treat, I think, when we're seeing the scene shot here. This is where all the sets are constructed. Yes, this is where the sets for all three stages are constructed. And it's the way they configured the building by putting it in the middle, behind, but in the middle, so that every single stage is easily accessed 
through great garage doors and they can move those big, huge sets, especially onto the main stage, using all the equipment. And that, what you just said is important because people don't get it, won't, won't get that picture, the, but everything is connected here. It's a nice flow as far as where the theaters are and how, the, how uh, things move. Right, when someone comes to visit us, I mean, they don't quite see it so much when they're, when they're a patron because they're entering through the front doors of the stages. But this is back in the rabbit's winter where you can see everything is connected and you can get to places much quicker, which actors and people need to do. Pretty soon it's going to be buzz saws and all sorts of things are going to be happening. Right? Yes, people with buckets of paint and people with saws and the whole thing. It's going to be very exciting. And now we're going to go to the center stage. Center stage, yes. That's okay. the black box theater. All right. Well, let's go there. Okay, great. Well, Ellen, now we're in the, in, the, in the center stage, and this is what we talked about before. It's a black box, although we do have a brick wall behind us. Yes. Um, but it, it is a universal space, and you know, we can hear probably some sounds of some people doing some lighting stuff, and uh, um, just a wonderful open feeling here. And it's a wonderful, um, it, again, you're intimate, because there, there's very few seats, only 125 tops. And they can be configured dependent upon how much stage area is needed for production. But it's so different because it's um, looking down on the stage. And it's a little different feel than your traditional theater. And this is where we do a lot of very edgy work, very different work. Um, not the elaborate scenery that you might expect, um, fewer actors, but you can hear and see so well, and you become part of the production. You really and truly do. You're drawn in just by how this theater is set up. Now, the old Nico stage, when it was down below here somewhere, that used to be the black box, I think, sort of. And there was there was a, um, a tendency to have more of the experimental or the, the um, um, plays in, in progress <coughs> type, type of thing is happening. So, is that, is that the same kind of concept here, or are you that's talking about much, edgy? Well, that's very much the concept here, but we have continued that on our new Nico stage as well. Okay. Um, the, there's uh, going to be Little America, it's going to be here, it's a world premiere, it was commissioned by the theater festival, and it's going to happen in this theater. So it's a really exciting place to be. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, we're, we're going to kind of go backwards. Like we, didn't, we didn't do the entrance on the, on the beginning, but we're going to do the entrance on the end before we once again fly back to the studio. Well, that's great, because then everyone can see exactly what the building looks like from outside and recognize it when they come to the Williamstown Theater Festival. Absolutely. Let's go. Okay. Ellen, well, it was a wonderful tour inside. I want to thank you again for having me be able to come here and talk to you on site. And we're going to now truly are uh, going to go back to the studio. So we'll have a little little transition time. And but thank you so much again. So this is wonderful to be able to see this. Robert, it is our pleasure, and we are so happy that you could come to Williamstown, and that you were so um, so interested in highlighting the theater festival, so people could really see what we have here and come enjoy it. And we're destined to have our viewers come too. Great. Okay, we're going to go one more time. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, what makes Williamstown Theater Festival so special? Because it really is special. It's extremely special. It is a highly professional uh, group of people to begin with. Many, most actually, um, of our producers, our directors, and a lot of our actors are professionals. We have equity actors. We also, though, have non-equity actors, people who have not um, moved into equity. It is. Everything is professionally done, and it's done just like you were on Broadway. Your scenery, your costume design, all of those pieces are very integral to each one of our productions. And people are used to coming and seeing really great, colorful, very, very busy uh, productions, and we do that. But the other piece that we do also is what is known in the business as edgy. Um, I like but edgy. <laughs> a lot of people like edgy. I was very, very happy to see that so many people said, oh, well, I want to see this and such because this is really going to be different. <laughs> and I think to myself, okay, good. good. <laughs> That's good. That makes me very happy. Um, our edgy work is often new. We would put on world premieres. A lot of our work then goes to Broadway and off-Broadway. Over the years, we've had a number right. of, of productions that have gone to Broadway. And these are pieces that might not have seen the light of day if Williamstown Theater Festival had not put them on. And we look 
all year long. Uh, the artistic director, Roger Rees, he reads and reads and reads all of these scripts that come in. Uh, and there's a myriad of them. And, mm -hmm. and he's doing it all year long and looking for that special spark, that special piece that is uh, going to be uh, different and is going to call attention to itself. Now, this year, we actually have one that we commissioned. Really? Yes. So that uh, that's also pretty exciting. It's a world premiere, but it was commissioned by the festival to be written. So that is, I think, why we are so special. OK, now, I want to go pull back just a little bit, because uh, there are tons of things I want to talk about <laughs> with you. But the history of the theater festival. Um, I mean, it has a legacy. It's well known. It was mm -hmm. well established. Um, and there's a tradition, uh, mm -hmm. a legacy, so to speak, that's, that's being carried on. Mm -hmm. Can you talk to that? It is, um, there is a legacy. And what is so nice about it at this point for me is listening to people talk about the beginnings. Uh, back in 1955, when Nikos and a bunch of businessmen from Williamstown said, you know, Williams College has got this great little theater, and it's sitting there, and all summer long, it's black. There's nobody in it. There's no school. The kids have all gone off, and could we use this? Could we use this, A, as a place to put really good theater, but B, as a tool to bring people to the Berkshires? And it's worked out beautifully. There's a great synergy. It's, it's an excellent partnership between the town of Williamstown and the theater and the college. And the, college. the college has been so supportive. So very, very, very supportive, and uh, they've allowed us to use. They allowed us to use the the uh, older theater, and now that they've built the new theater building, it's the 62 Center for Theater and Dance, and it's got three stages in it. It's a fabulous, fabulous building. Uh, my office is in it. I absolutely <laughs> love it. <laughs> um, it's they're very generous, extremely generous. We use dormitories in the, the summertime to house our apprentices and our interns and our other staff that comes up just for the season. And we use, you know, we use their dining facilities. We use the entire campus as if it were our own, and they're very, very good about it. So a lot of the decisions that are made are, are made cooperatively with the with the college and uh, and the and the uh, theater festival, and and you know because it's a it's a combined effort actually, right? Well, it's a combined effort in making sure that we have everything that we need. Okay. Um, when you think about creating scenery and the space that's required to create scenery, we use their scene shop. And they're so, they're so really nice about it because they kind of pull to the side for us because when we, once we move in and we get moving, we kind of take over, and especially this year using three stages. But they're, they're really, really great. We take the building. They give us the building, and we use it as it were our own. Now, when Nikos died, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, it was like, whoa, what's going to yeah. happen here? And mm -hmm. so I think that was a, probably a very formidable uh, task for someone to come in and say, mm -hmm. You know, we, we, we have this wonderful thing here. We don't want to lose it. And so, um, you know, fortunately, I believe they have. Mm -hmm. um, and it's taken some years of transition. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, uh, you know, to be able to keep that mix. Because I said before, people who come are expecting something. Yes. Quality theater, uh, the Broadway people, yep. uh, the name people. Um, mm -hmm. So that must have been a real um, challenge for people. I believe there was, it, it, obviously it's a challenge because those are big footsteps to follow in. But there were also enough people that had been with the theater and who were uh, really cared about the theater, our board of trustees, all of those people have helped. Everybody pitches in. I have to say, of, of all the places I've ever worked, they are the greatest as far as is communication and working and ideas and rolling up their sleeves. My trustees are fabulous. The staff is fabulous. Everybody cares about the theater. And it's so obvious when you talk to people. It's like, wow, OK, they really, really care that we put on a good production. And we're going to make sure that it happens. So uh, it, like you and I were talking about a little bit before, everybody wears many hats. <laughs> <laughs> no, one, no one just says, no, that's, that's, you know, I just do this. No, they do whatever they need to do to make sure. I mean, you're marketing. You're talking with donors. You're talking with actors. You're, you're, you're painting something. You're making sure the signs are up. You're making sure everything is moving swiftly and in the way it's supposed to so that it's a seamless operation so when our patrons come in the only thing they're doing is enjoying a production absolutely that's what you have to do 
Roger coming was was a, I think a big a big thing, um, mm -hmm. and not not to take anything away from the people that preceded him. Um, I mean, this was a person or is a person who is very well known, mm -hmm. um, you know, in the movies, you know, Nicholas Nickleby, all oh, that. That's right. Um, so I think this was a an, an exciting exciting moment in in this whole history of this festival. Um, and how long has he been there now? This is Roger's third season, and uh, he's he's just doing a fabulous job. He's, he's such a dynamo. The man is such a dynamo. I, if I had his schedule, I just would have to nap every 10 minutes. <laughs> he really, uh, he knows what he's doing. He's a fabulous actor. He's a fabulous director. He knows the theater inside and out. But I also believe that his film career and his television career are also added pluses because it makes a well-rounded person who understands everything that needs to happen. And he is just He's just fabulous. And but he doesn't put the I'm a star in front of him. I mean, he's no. really, he's, he's the artistic director, right? He's, he, Roger's the artistic and, director. And, and, you know, he acts, he directs, but he also keeps this whole thing together. He's an administrator. Yes, he is. He is. He is the, he's, the top, he's the top person. And he, he keeps us all moving. He keeps it all together. He uh, is so busy in the artistic end of it, um, but also in the administrative end. Now, you talk about, you know, reading plays that are submitted for the possibility of being, you know, the first time out. Um, I would imagine the process of picking a season. I mean, I've talked to other, other people, theater and, and, and music. Picking a season must be really quite a task, um, quite a job. I, I'm not sure what it entails, but I can imagine it's quite something. It's overwhelming. It really is. If you think of yourself sit seated at a desk and you've got 40 scripts in front of you. Okay, which one do you read first and how do you maintain an objective eye as you're doing that? But I also think that comes from knowledge and experience, which obviously Roger has, and I believe that's why he does so well. I think that's why he can say, no, this probably isn't correct for Williamstown, uh, but oh, this would play very, very well. Understanding not only what it takes to put it on, but his audience. And that's extremely important. Okay. Now, getting to know what the audience likes and doesn't like. I mean, um, I don't ever remember any audience surveys, but I'm sure that if people don't like something, you find that out, right? Oh, yes, immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Matter of fact, if you stand outside the door <laughs> of the stage, you will know immediately whether they were happy or unhappy. <laughs> but that's also extremely important. That's feedback that we want. We want to know, did we hit it? Did we nail it? Or is it a problem? And that way we can make sure we don't make any mistakes a second time. There's, there's, n there's no real, uh, it's not bad to make a mistake, but you don't want to do it twice. And people are very, very vocal, but we appreciate that. Because yeah. they're equally as vocal when they enjoy something. I'm sure you don't live on the reviews, but good reviews are, 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 are important. And I think you get attention from, from uh, uh, New York reviewers too. Um, to you know, come to the, the productions here. So I'm mm -hmm. I, I, a good review. Obviously, is an asset. Oh. Um, but uh, you're really I I have always had the sense that the people who come there are the people who you want to please and and, and mm -hmm. produce the fine theater for. But reviews are important. Yep. Okay. Reviews are very important, and they're important from a number of different aspects. Um, as director of development, if I'm writing a grant, and I'm writing a grant to a foundation that, that takes care of performing arts, they want to see your reviews. And so, from my aspect, it's extremely important. And it's good buzz. It's, it's good marketing. Good reviews are fabulous. But you're right. We don't live or die on them, but we are... You appreciate them a lot. <laughs> very much so. <laughs> Well, let's talk about the season, um, and, and, and there's some other aspects I want to talk to. We have a lot to talk about, but what about the season, um, highlights of the season this year? This season, and this is the first time we've done 10 productions. We normally did seven, so we're starting a little bit earlier. We're starting June 14th, and we're doing 10 productions. We're doing four on the main stage, which is, is the large stage. We are doing, okay, here we go, six on Nikos stage, which is the smaller stage, and we're doing two in the center stage, which is brand new for us. It's a black box theater. Okay. And it's um, just to explain a little bit about that. It when you enter it, you literally have a black floor, black walls, black ceiling, and the stage, the the area for performance is 
floor level and the seats go up in risers. So um, it only holds maximum 125 people and it depends upon the production how they arrange the seating. They may need more room or they may, may need less room. But uh, it's going to be a, a great experience, a really great experience. Now is the, the former Main stage, the Nico stage now, or am I? No. No, okay. No, the, uh, what we call the Nico stage is the one that really took the place of the original theater. Okay. The original theater was a 90 seat theater. The Nikos, the new Nikos, is 172, which was a real boon for us uh, because we always always had people like wanting to knock down the doors and they wanted to get in and there was just <laughs> no place to put them. So uh, this really works well for us and it's still feels extremely intimate, mm -hmm. which is a, a wonderful feel uh, for the stage. And uh, many of our actors don't even need to be mic'd. That's how good the acoustics are. And so it's, it's a really nice, comfortable, intimate area in which to see a play. And that's where more of our, our edgier type entertainment takes place. Now the main stage is like any large theater and it's it's over 500 seats and that is new to us these these past couple of years because we never had a venue where we could we could hold 500 people. So that's been a real help too as far as ticket sales and as far as being able to get people in to see a play where they ne didn't necessarily, they weren't able to before because yeah. it was sold out. Um, although we do still sell out, and it, but it it's, uh, takes a little bit longer and more people get an opportunity. More stage machinery and all that? I mean, Oh yes, uh, everything. But that all belongs to the college yep. and we use it, which um, is wonderful. It's such a boon for us because it's not stuff that we have to buy. Um, although we do have a lot of, of, of lighting and sound equipment of our own, all that big, huge equipment to the on stages is, is belongs to the college and we use it. Now if we want to get into the actual titles, of the, um, we're not, and we won't talk about that right now, of what's being what done, we do have a web page that we're going to put down here. Okay, great. And uh, people can go to the web page, it's a good web page, mm -hmm. and find out all about the season and who's in right, it. And, right, um, exactly. I bet you people are being added all the time, or is that pretty well settled now? No, it's never settled until <laughs> the first day of rehearsal, <laughs> trust <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, we try very, very hard, but just because of you have, you're working with managers and you're working with agents and you're working with schedules that are hectic, um, oftentimes there might be a, a little surprise here and there, a surprise, an unhappy surprise because someone can't, but a be sometimes a very happy surprise because someone can. Now you have um, a theater which is, you know, you, you employ uh, equity actors and you, know, you build a cast. Um, but you have, to have an opportunity at Williamstown for education. Yes. For, for someone who is, you know, wanting to get into this line of business, so to speak, mm -hmm. um, at, at, a at any particular level. So let's mm -hmm. talk about that. We have a fabulous apprentice and in internship. Um, we bring in approximately 200 apprentices and interns every year into to Williamstown to work in the theater. Now, these apprentices and interns can be, uh, they're all young talent, people who believe they want to be in the theater, or people who have been trying to break into the theater. Um, a lot of them are uh, in their second or next to last year in a theater uh, program at, at a university, and we cover the gamut. These young people can come in, I mean, they can come in because they want to act, want to direct, people who want to be on the technical end of it, such as scene design and costume design. But we go so far as to also have people learning how the theater runs from an administrative point of view. And these young people come and they learn at the feet of professionals because all of these, these pieces are staffed by Broadway professionals that uh, have been working in this for years and years and they mentor and it's a wonderful program. Uh, we have them young people beating down the door to get in. I was going to say, do you have more applications than you have positions? Obviously. Yes, we and do. Is it, is it an audition, portfolios, things like that? Exactly. That's exactly what it is. They audition, they bring a portfolio, uh, they bring a transcript depending upon what they've been doing in college and also any references from other work that they had done. And it is so competitive competitive that unfortunately we often have to choose someone over someone else just because there's not a spot. Now someone can actually have a career start to develop at Williamstown too. Uh, I swear, I mean, they're, they're, I remember seeing uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman mm -hmm. walking in the back of a <laughs> production of I don't know what it was, mm -hmm. um, you know, as one of the townspeople. Yes, Okay, exactly. And he was there for quite a few years, so mm -hmm. uh, it can be a whole 
you know, stepping up the ladder to your stepping possibly up big career. Well, those people like Christopher and Dana Reeves, right. they began at Williamstown. Gwyneth Paltrow began at, at Williamstown. People, those are names that you easily yes. recognize. Yes. But that has happened for tons of people. We've done that for tons of people, and it feels really good. Um, I had a, a trustee say to me, you know, pull out your playbills. And I always save my playbills from everything just because <laughs> I love to read about the people. And so I went home and I pulled them out, and she was correct. Over 50% of the resumes in those playbills, they had been at Williamstown Theater Festival. There you go. And that's really heartwarming. It makes you feel very, very good. And we have people who want to come back year after year after year. And they do progress as they come back. They might come back, come originally as, as a very young intern, and they move into apprenticeships, and then they move on to, to broad, Off-Broadway and Broadway and other regional theaters. And it feels very, very good. And they have an opportunity to see the entire theater how it operates. Um, because it's such a short period, it's like a two-month period in which this is happening, so you've you, you go from soup to nuts, you do the entire gamut, and they get to see how is this done from picking a play to rehearsing a play to creating uh, everything that goes with it and then uh, putting it on and having your audience appreciate you. So a real community is formed. Definitely. Very definitely, and oh, people become close and fast I friends would for life. These yeah. are, these are your lifelong. These are people that are lifelong friends for you, and uh, you have similar similar interests, which is really really great. And also, you can go in being thinking you want to be one thing, thinking that your career path is going down one one angle, and all of a sudden, because you've been exposed and because you have been allowed to participate, you find, well, you know what? I really enjoy this. I thoroughly love set design. Or uh, some perceptive professional says, you uh, know what? I think you'd be better doing this and, and absolutely. Maybe just help somebody move over. Absolutely. And they help, they, they do. They absolutely mentor them and they bring them along the paths that make sense for them. And it's a really great educational opportunity. Now, you have another very interesting uh, a project going on, the Greylock Theater Project. Yes. Let's talk about that. Well, Greylock Theater Project is a wonderful program that helps disadvantaged youth in the area. And they have a, a, a summer long program that brings these youth into the program. They work with professionals. And there's three programs within it. There's one's called one on one. That means the young person has a dedicated professional to show them the ropes and explain theater, again, from soup to nuts, so that they understand, they understand it. And they work very, very hard with these young people, and they create a great mentorship program. Then we have what's called playmaking, which means that these young people create a play, write it, create it, work with professionals to see it come to fruition. And it might be a, a 10 minute soliloquy of some sort. It can be anything. And this is performed at the end of the project. And we also have what you call teen ensemble. Now, teen ensemble, I think, is extremely important because not only have they learned everything that they're learning about theater, they're learning to work with one another. Mm -hmm. And that's extremely important for people. And so they work as a team, they put on a play. And at the end of, of this project, which is closer to the end of our summer season, all of these plays are produced and put on, and we invite the public to them. And of course, their proud parents come, but so do their, their teachers in um, uh, the administrators of their schools where they go. Friends. And you know, all of that friends, brothers, sisters, everybody comes. And they, I mean, it is such a proud moment for them. They put these plays on, and we actually have them sit up on stage so that they can be right there in, in watching as their production is being put on. And uh, it's a very, very, very good program. Now, this is for children approximately from the age of 9 to 18. Now, how are they selected? They're selected through their schools and um, juvenile programs that feel that this might be helpful for them. Okay. Okay. Really sounds like an exciting. Now, how, how long has this been going on? Is, is this the first year or no? No. This started in 94. Okay. So it's been around for a little while, and it's really very, very successful. And um, a lot of people within the area are extremely, in, in, uh, they really and truly want to make sure that it keeps going. So they're very wonderful donors to it. Now, it's not just about what happens on the stage in Williamstown. I mean, it's like a whole experience there. I'm putting a plug in for Williamstown, you know, <laughs> and restaurants and all that stuff. But there's always this, this 
cabaret. There's, a, there's, a, there's an opportunity to see performers do something other than yes. be in the play that's on the stage. Yes, we have a number of other programs. Um, and in the one that you mentioned, which is cabaret, which is such fun, that is, um, there, there's a professional cabaret group, but they uh, mm -hmm. perform very late at night. It doesn't even begin until 11 o'clock at night. And we have uh, many of our performers come in and perform out of venue, which is really kind of interesting. <laughs> I love the phrase. <laughs> <laughs> People singing who are going, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, but it's all wonderful and good fun, and, and there's a lot of, of uh, really good uh, feeling that comes off of that stage because people are stretching and doing things just because it's fun. And um, our, the people that come to Cabaret absolutely adore it. Absolutely adore it. And um, we really have full houses. There's a lot of people that I imagine. come. They've been going on a long time, haven't they? They've been going on, I think, probably for the last 20 years. Yeah. yeah. Now, there's also play readings. Yes. Uh, and there's a, a special program where you have, you know, people, there's a regular yes. programming for those. Yeah, we have, well, our Mondays are dark. The, okay. There's no productions on Monday. But we have filled those Mondays. Um, and one of the, uh, well, the readings actually are Fridays at 3 is okay. what it's called. Okay. And they are at 3 o'clock on Friday. And, and there's a uh, new place plays that you ne wouldn't necessarily know about um, that are read, and it's a, it's a lot of fun to watch, and it's very, very interesting. Um, so the playwrights are there. Um, are, people, are people from the, the company of the year, do they help in the reading? Exactly. People from the company and the playwrights, and it's extremely interesting because these are not things that you would recognize, yeah. which makes it a lot of fun, which makes it, it keeps you on your toes as a listener, and I think it, uh, it's also a different way of viewing a play, and of something that people oftentimes aren't aware of. It's very, it's very interesting. I find it extremely interesting. And you might see something that actually turns into something. Exactly. Yeah, You'd I'm be sure. surprised. You know, yeah. five years down the road, you think, oh my gosh, I heard that reading, and here it is being produced and staged somewhere. And so that's a, it's, it's a really good, interesting thing for people to do, and it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. And it's at three o'clock on Fridays. Um, that takes place in the Nico stage. On Mondays, we have a number of different things. We're having um, Roger Rees is doing uh, the Bard, the one-man show on the Bard, which is part sol soliloquy and part commentary. Really? On, on, yes, it's really, it's an excellent, and excellent And what is he doing show. that? Is he doing that more than once? Or no, he's just doing it once. Matter of fact, he just completed it in Washington. He did it at uh, the National Theater in Washington, and now he's going to be doing it here. You have to give me that date. I will. <laughs> <laughs> I will. And it's going to be really, really good. He is also, in conjunction with the Clark Art Institute, um, that we are putting on a program called The Reading of Monet's Letters. Really? Yes, and I um, happen to know the date for that one. That one is August... Okay, I want to say August the 18th, but I'll check it. Okay. Um, and, but that is in conjunction with, with the Clark. It's taking place at the Clark, and Roger will be one of the people reading the letters. So th we, we try to pull together collaborations where we can. My goodness, it's like a whirlwind of activity. Now, if you go to the web page, will this information be on the web all page of it as is well? All of it is on the web page. You just need to, to click in, and actually, within uh, another week and a half, you'll actually be able to buy tickets online. Okay. Now, there's a buying tickets. So there's an advantage, always, I believe, to having people be subscribers. Mm -hmm. Okay, because there's a commitment, there's a season. And um, Williamstown really gives you a, 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 a fair amount of flexibility in, in, in becoming a subs being a subscriber, right, in terms of picking your performance dates. And oh, definitely. Like and you, the the advantage to being a subscriber from the ticket buy buyer's point of view is dependent upon your membership level. You come before the general public. If we have your, your order for tickets and you are a subscriber and dependent upon your level, because we always start from the top down, yes. we fill those first. We fill them before the general public. And that's a huge, that's a huge advantage. It really is, because especially popular plays and things that everyone wants to see, you want to make sure you're a member so that you can get in and get your tickets. I remember when Gwyneth Paltrow was in um, one of the Shakespeare's, I believe, that mm -hmm. was, I think it was sold off <laughs> out before it was even ever. I know, <laughs> exactly, and that happens. It's wonderful. Well, I, I, I probably shouldn't even plug it, but we're having a concert. Jimmy Naughton is putting on a concert. Oh, really? It's actually um, a tribute to Ira Lapidus, who was our president of our board for many, many years, and that's sold out. That's sold out before yeah. we even opened the box office. <laughs> So sorry, folks. <laughs>
<laughs> now, if someone wants to buy individual tickets, say they, they don't want to be a subscriber there, you say it's soon, soon they'll be able to go on the web page and, yes. and do that. But also, I would imagine that they could come to the box office? Yes, the box office will be open June 4th, and okay. you can walk right up to the box office. It's manned for uh, the normal hours, and you can just buy tickets. And of course, everything is, is, is seating availability. Uh, there are, you can ask for particular seats. Now, we don't know whether you'll get them or not, yeah. but uh, we certainly try to put you in the same type of area that you requested. I like to know where I'm sitting when I buy my <laughs> ticket, I'll have to tell you, but it's okay. I'm used so to does it. everyone else, Robert. <laughs> so does everyone. <laughs> but I have to accept what goes on anyway. So um, we're this is wonderful. I would really enjoyed talking to you. Well, we're thank at the, you. we're really at the close of the show today, but I'd I'd like to give you an opportunity to say something more about William Ta Williamstown, one last thing about Williamstown that you can, you can say to our, our viewers here. Well, I think that um, your visit to Williamstown, your visit to the what we call the Berkshire Hills, there mm -hmm. is so much culture there, the, and Williamstown Theatre Festival is a huge part of it. So when people want to come, they don't have to worry about whether there's other things to do, whether there's great restaurants, whether there's nice places to stay. It's a gorgeous area, and it's very tourist-friendly, and we have so much to offer there that I, I would just ask people to come, take a drive through, and see everything that there is to see. And please, while you're doing it, stop at the Williamstown <laughs> Theater Festival <laughs> and see a show, because it's, it's really important that this kind of venue, that the, the theater festival itself is continues. Uh, we are Tony Award winners, which I don't think I mentioned in 2002. You didn't, but I'm glad you did. Yeah, 2002, we won the, the Regional, Regional Theater, Theater Tony Award, which you can only win once in your career. So uh, it was very, it was a very important thing, and it's because it's really good theater Wonderful. and people enjoy it. I agree. I agree. Thanks again for being my guest. Thank you, Robert. I thoroughly enjoyed myself. And thank you for joining me on Getting to Know You. I hope you enjoyed today's show. As you know, I love the arts, and I sure did. And I hope you join us next time. Until then, have a good one.